Hey everyone, remember those catchy tunes from the 50s that make you tap your feet? Well, let's talk about a movie from 1954 called The Glenn Miller Story. If you haven't seen it yet, stick around because we've got some cool, surprising, and sad facts to share. Can you recall the first time you watched this movie? Or maybe there's a character you really liked? Share your thoughts with us in the comments. We want to hear about your favorite moments or personal experiences with this film. Now, let's dive into the story of a famous band leader and his journey through the highs and lows of life. No spoilers, but get ready for a roller coaster of emotions. We're eager to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So, spill the beans and let's keep the conversation going. Stay tuned for more interesting tidbits about the Glenn Miller story, there's more to come. The story of a renowned musician and band leader from the swing era has left a lasting impression on audiences worldwide. It recounts his journey to fame, the challenges he faced, and his mysterious disappearance during World War II. This portrayal of his dedication to music has inspired many aspiring artists. The movie's popularity remains strong even decades later thanks to its timeless music and engaging storyline. It offers a glimpse into the life of a legend and the era he lived in, reminding us of the power of determination and passion. This story continues to resonate because it shows how music can transcend time and connect people across generations. In the world of entertainment, some actors leave a lasting impression not just through their roles, but also through their personal connections to their craft. Take, for example, one actor who played a character across various television versions and even in a movie adaptation. Another actor, Known for his work with Disney, embodied a character both on and off set, becoming a beloved figure for viewers. Then there's the actor who, after winning an Oscar, sent the trophy to his father's hardware shop, where it remained for decades as a symbol of his achievements. These stories show how actors can become intertwined with the characters they portray, leaving a memorable impact not only on screen, but also in their personal lives. Whether it's through consistent reprisals of a character or heartfelt gestures like sending an award back home, these actors have made their mark on the entertainment world in meaningful ways. During WW2, Harry Morgan, alongside other actors, contributed to making training films for the U.S. Army. One notable work of his from 1942, The Rifle Platoon, can be found on YouTube. Marion Ross had prior collaborations with Tom Bosley, her co-star from Happy Days. They worked together on one movie and various episodes across multiple series. Louis Armstrong achieved a remarkable feat in 1964 by dethroning the Beatles from the top spot on the charts with Hello Dolly at the age of 63. In the Glenn Miller story, June Allison, known for her role as Helen Berger Miller, developed a close friendship with Claudette Colbert during their work on The Secret Heart in 1946. Their bond grew so strong that Claudette became the godmother of June's daughter, Pamela Powell. James Stewart, portraying Glenn Miller, stood tall at 6'3", as confirmed by the curator of the James Stewart Museum. Despite his lean frame, Stewart barely met the minimum weight requirement of 143 pounds for enlistment in the U.S. Army Air Forces. He later surpassed this weight by the late 1950s, weighing in at 160 pounds. Stewart's stature in the film industry was equally impressive, earning him the third spot on the 50 greatest screen legends actor list by the American Film Institute. His portrayal of Miller remains a notable highlight in his illustrious career. At the movie premiere, Glenn Miller's mom thought the film was good, but said her son looked better than James Stewart, who played him. James Stewart really liked the special Oscar he got in 1985 and said it was the best award ever. He was happy people still remembered him after so long. During the award ceremony, the audience clapped for him for 10 minutes straight. Steven Spielberg was there too, and everyone respected Stewart a lot. In 1987, Harry Morgan acted as LAPD Detective Webb in a show. It reminded people of his role in Dragnet from 1967, where he also played a cop. It shows he's been connected to police roles for a long time in his career. The Glenn Miller story, released in 1954, features notable actors in various roles. Harry Morgan, known for his roles in several TV series, appeared as a regular on 11 shows spanning from the 1950s to the 1980s. Marion Ross, who attended Gavin McLeod's memorial service in 2021, shared the screen with him on the love boat in 1977. Frances Langford, a member of the battling by Kirsten's comedy team with Don Amici, had her first complete biography published in 2017, authored by Ben Omar, who also wrote about Amici and the by Kirsten's. James Stewart, known for his roles in iconic films, was a prominent figure in Hollywood's golden era. 
His career spans several decades, during which he starred in 12 films now recognized as culturally significant by the Library of Congress. These include classics like Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, It's a Wonderful Life, Rear Window, and Vertigo. During his time at Princeton, Stewart honed his acting skills in stage productions with the Triangle Club, where he caught the attention of a talent scout named William Grady Jr. Despite initial skepticism, Grady noted Stewart's standout performance and would later become his best man at Stewart's wedding. After a prolific career, Stewart entered semi-retirement following his role in The Magic of Lassie. He faced numerous health challenges, including heart disease, skin cancer, deafness, and senility. In 1954, a film about a famous band leader hit the big screen, offering a peek into his life and music. It featured Harry Morgan, known for his role as Colonel Potter in a popular TV show. Interestingly, he showcased his painting skills in some episodes. The movie's music, released on a record, topped the charts in March 1954. However, one beloved song wasn't included in the original release. Fortunately, it was later added to a CD version, completing the soundtrack. Additionally, a subsidiary of the record company had another group record two medleys of the band leader's hits, which also gained popularity on the charts. One actor in the film, born on Christmas Day, had a notable connection with Humphrey Bogart. They appeared together in several movies. Over time, the soundtrack album expanded, including studio recordings by Louis Armstrong and his band. Notably, some songs were added that Armstrong didn't perform in the film. Eventually, the soundtrack was reissued in stereo. These details offer a glimpse into the making and release of the 1954 film, adding depth to the story with behind-the-scenes tales and musical elements. In the Glenn Miller story, June Allison, known for her spry goody two-shoes roles, ventured into extreme characters only a couple of times in her career. In The Shrike, she portrayed a harsh, cold-hearted wife to Jose Fur, which didn't resonate with audiences, leading to the movie's failure. In They Only Killed Her Masters, one of her final films, she played a lesbian murderess. James Stewart, who made a cameo in the Glenn Miller story, faced challenges while filming The Shootist. He struggled with hearing difficulties aggravated by bad acoustics on set. Despite his efforts, he and John Wayne often stumbled over lines, leading the director to question their commitment. Wayne defended Stewart, attributing the errors to hearing issues. During the filming of The Big Sleep, Stewart appeared older than his actual age due to a hearing impairment and memory problems. This contributed to his decision to retire from films, coupled with concerns about the direction of modern cinema. 